1944, the U.S. Army Rifle Squad consisted of 12 enlisted personnel. One squad leader, one assistant squad leader, one automatic rifleman, one assistant automatic rifleman, one ammo bearer, two rifle grenadiers, and five riflemen. The automatic rifleman got an M1918A2 BAR, while everyone else in the squad was authorized an M1 rifle. In addition, the assistant squad leader and rifle grenadiers carried an M7 grenade adapter that allowed them to fire rifle grenades. Each soldier authorized an M1 rifle had a baseline ammo load of 88 rounds. 80 rounds were carried in the M1923 cartridge belt. Its 10 pockets held one 8-round N-block clip each. Another clip would be loaded in the rifle ready to fire. One to two additional disposable cloth bandoliers could be carried across the torso in a combat situation. Each bandolier had 48 rounds, so one additional bandolier would make for a total ammo load of 136 rounds. From 1944, each man in the squad was equipped with an M1 general purpose carrying bag, except for the assistant automatic rifleman and ammo bearer who carried two. These could be used to carry a variety of munitions or equipment in addition to the baseline ammo loads. One bag could fit four cloth bandoliers for a total of 192 rounds, 10 BAR magazines, a 250 round machine gun ammo belt, or 11 hand grenades. In early 1945, soldiers who had been issued one of these bags would begin to be issued two. Thus, there was likely a wide variance in the actual ammo load that soldiers carried in practice. However, given that a loaded cartridge belt and two bandoliers alone weighed almost 14 pounds, there are obvious limitations here due to weight concerns. Meanwhile, ammunition for the squad's BAR was distributed amongst multiple men. The BAR gunner was issued an M1937 cartridge belt designed specifically to carry BAR magazines. Each belt had six pockets, with each pocket being able to carry two magazines. In practice, often one of the pouches would be used to carry a leather tool pouch rather than the two magazines. An additional magazine would have been carried loaded in the gun ready to fire, so the practical load would be 11 magazines for the bar gunner for a total of 220 rounds. The assistant BAR gunner and ammunition bearer would have both also been issued one M1937 cartridge belt for BAR magazines and two general purpose carrying bags for their rifle ammunition and other equipment. Each could have carried up to 12 magazines each in their BAR cartridge belts, although some would have been redistributed to other riflemen in the squad as a fully loaded BAR magazine belt weighed over 18 pounds. This made for a total of 35 BAR magazines or 700 rounds in the three-man BAR team. As the Army's unit of fire for one BAR was about 750 rounds, or 37 to 38 magazines, we believe this to be a fairly reasonable approximation. Now, soldiers authorized rifle grenades could carry as many as five rifle grenades in each general purpose bag, although as many as 11 could be fit if the rifle grenades were taken out of their packaging. Meanwhile, one to two Mark II fragmentation grenades were commonly issued to the infantry and could be carried in specialized grenade pouches or hooked onto a soldier's jacket. By contrast, the U.S. Army Airborne were expected to jump with much more ammunition, especially for their support weapons, than the average U.S. Army infantry squad would have carried into battle. Rifle platoons were also organized differently, which changed the loadout for the squad. Paratroopers would be expected to operate for hours or days behind enemy lines without the chance for a reliable resupply, unlike standard infantry. Now, these numbers are based on what would have been jumped with on D-Day and not necessarily what a combat load would have looked like later on in the fighting. Given the nature of the paratroopers, many may have jumped with an even greater ammo load than what is listed here. At the time of D-Day, the U.S. Army paratrooper squad consisted of the following. One squad leader, one assistant squad leader, one machine gunner, one assistant machine gunner, one ammo bearer, and seven riflemen. The machine gunner was issued an M1919A4 belt-fed medium machine gun and M1A1 carbine, while the assistant gunner just had a carbine. All other personnel were armed with M1 rifles. All personnel armed with rifles would have carried 136 rounds. Ten clips would have been carried in an M1923 cartridge belt and six in a disposable cloth bandolier like the regular infantry, or in four rigger pouches that each held four clips. In either scenario, the trooper would jump with a clip in the gun in his hand or in a pocket for quick access when on the ground. 
Personnel armed with M1A1 carbines were ordered to carry 175 rounds in five magazines of 15 rounds each and two boxes of cartridges with 50 rounds each. One magazine could be carried in hand or in a pocket as the carbine was carried in a scabbard on the leg, while the remainder was split between two breaker pouches mounted on his pistol belt. Unlike the regular infantry who opted for the magazine-fed BAR, the paratroopers served a belt-fed machine gun at the squad level. Ammo for the M1919 was carried in 250 round fabric ammo belts and distributed throughout the squad on the jump. Each belt weighed over 19 pounds and the squad jumped with 13 of them. 2,000 rounds were dropped in a bundle that would be retrieved by the machine gun team, while 1,250 rounds in five belts were jumped on men in the squad. Generally, in combat, the gunner would carry the gun and one ammo belt, while the assistant carried the tripod and two 250 round ammo belts. Although submachine guns were not in the rifle squad's TONE, six were officially at the rifle company's disposal to issue when needed. In reality, paratroopers were notorious for getting more than they were officially allotted, so submachine guns were issued in much higher concentrations among paratroopers than other infantry, especially for D-Day. A Thompson gunner would generally jump with approximately 300 rounds carried in 15 20-round magazines or a combination of 30 and 20-rounders. One magazine would be carried in a jacket pocket or in the weapon so it could be quickly loaded on the ground, while the remaining 14 would be carried in five or three cell magazine pouches and a general purpose carrying bag. All personnel were to carry four to six fragmentation grenades. Further, several men would also carry one 60mm mortar round. Unlike in standard infantry platoons, each parachute rifle platoon had a mortar squad that served one 60mm mortar when on the ground rifle companies would bring these platoon mortars together to support the whole company. So each mortar had its rounds distributed throughout the platoon as well as rounds dropped in bundles that were then retrieved by the mortar squad. Now for the Marines, as of January 1944, the Marine Rifle Squad consisted of one squad leader with a carbine and three fire teams, each consisting of four men. The fire team leader had a rifle, while the automatic rifleman had a BAR, assistant automatic rifleman an M1 carbine, and the rifleman a rifle. If you want a deep dive on this squad organization, you can check out my previous video on the development of the Marine Squad during the war. Each Marine armed with a carbine was allotted five carbine magazines. This included one that was loaded ready to fire, and four contained in two carbine magazine pouches worn on the pistol belt. Each Marine armed with a rifle was allotted 10 end block clips of eight rounds each for their baseline ammo load carried in the M1923 cartridge belt. Disposable cloth bandoliers were also worn with six clips each, and a clip was kept in the gun ready to fire. This would bring the total load to 136 rounds. Ammo for the BAR was distributed throughout the fire teams. The automatic riflemen carried nine loaded magazines, one in the gun and eight in their cartridge belts. The assistant BAR gunner also carried a BAR cartridge belt. They could carry up to 12 BAR magazines as they were not issued a tool pouch and didn't have the extra weight of the BAR. However, the manual Marine Rifle Squad in Combat states that up to four of these magazines could be redistributed to the rifleman and fire team leader, who could each carry two magazines in their kit. In May 1945, the assistant BAR gunner's M1 carbine was replaced with an M1 rifle. At this point, they would have carried the same initial load of 10 clips in the cartridge belt and one clip in the rifle as the other riflemen. Depending on the mission, Marines carried one to two fragmentation grenades. Everyone except for the BAR gunner was also technically authorized a rifle grenade launcher, although it is unlikely that everyone actually carried one in practice. Thus, it could be expected that a handful of men per squad were also armed with two to five rifle grenades and a rifle grenade adapter if the mission dictated. Although the Thompson submachine gun was not in the platoon's table of organization after 1943, it was sometimes used as a carbine substitute or as a special purpose weapon that was rotated through the squad for duties such as clearing pillboxes. As of June 1944, the unit of fire for the submachine gun was 300 rounds. There were three and five cell magazine pouches for 20 and 30 round magazines. A full five cell pouch plus one magazine in the gun would make for 180 rounds in total. If a general purpose carrying bag was worn, up to 14 30 round submachine gun magazines could be carried assuming there was nothing else in the bag, like grenades or other bits of kit. 